soon. All right, all right. Okay. Um, so how's your homework like? How was your homework like? Did you guys finish it? Or yes. And do you have any like question about the homework? Yeah, on page thirty. Page thirty. Okay, which question? For 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 you. What? Which which one? Forty to forty two. Forty forty to forty two. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Oh. Okay, so, so here, look for question forty, right? There's like a there's three angles, right? And there's like the first angle is angle ABC, right? And angle ABD and angle BDC, right? There are three angles. So, and and you also know that the ray BD, which is the middle line here, bisects angle ABC, right? Yeah. What does that mean? Like it intersects with it? Like what does bisect mean? Like here. It's supposed to down the middle. Yeah, so they, they, they just like separate, like split the angle into two parts, two congruent parts, like two two equal parts. Right? So you know the angle over here and the angle over here, they are equal, right? Mm. So, and here they want, they are, they are asking you to find the measurement of angle ABC, which is the entire angle, right? So here, but first we have to solve for X, right? Just a variable here. We don't, that, that, like, there's an X that we don't know, like what's the exact value for it. So we have to solve for it. But, but also remember, because it is, because we know those two small small angles, they're congruent to each other. So we can set the equation up to 4x minus 2 equals 3x plus 18, right? Here. It becomes 4x minus 2 equals uh, what's, uh, what 3x plus 16, right? And now you just solve for the equation, right? Yeah. So, so like, what's the x value for it? Well, like, what's the x value? One. What was that? One. One. Uh, think about it. Like, what's the... No, no, no. Try to try to do it. Try to write it down. Like, don't think in your head. It's not one, but Try to. Eighteen. Eighteen. Are you sure? So oh, I put the wrong thing. I put the wrong right? thing. Right. Yeah. Okay. Think about it. Think about it. You gotta. You gotta double check. So you get the So what's the x value? Twenty. Yep. So so now we have the value for x, right? That's only x, the value for x. So remember, we always, we always, we always have to plug it back in, right? You gotta put the x value back into the equation. So here, if you put x equals twenty back into the first equation, so what's the value for the for the first angle for the angle for angle to be the what's the value for that? Seventy-eight. Seventy-eight, right? It is seventy-eight. And what's the second angle? Seventy-eight. Yep. So now we just add it up, right? We just add it up, right? Because we know 
two angles, two small angles form the, the angle ABC, that's right? That's correct. Yeah. And if we add it up, you get 156, right? Mm -hmm. That's a measurement. That's the answer for, for, for 40. Got it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's let's try to solve it. Solve 41 on your own. Oh, you get it? Yeah. What's the answer? 80. 80. Yep. But, but remember. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. It is. It is 80. Okay. Also, try, try, try 42. That's a little bit hard, but. Let you do it. Let you solve it. Tell me when you get the answer, okay? You get it? No. Uh, which part are you? Are you stuck? I'm stuck on like the um, the adding them together to find x. Oh well. Oh, adding them together. Okay. Well, like put. So, yeah, putting them together, find x. So you know, so you 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 have already like put up the equation, right? Which is plus seventeen out of twenty-five. Minus equals x minus 33, right? That's the equation, right? Yeah. So you are, you don't know how to put them together, right? Yeah. So so yeah. remember here, 
we just do the same thing as like what we did before for like all the equations, right? So you plus 33 on both sides, right? So what, what do you get over here? You get uh, a 50, right? 17 plus 33 equals 50, right? Yeah. And you also minus two, like one half times x, like x over two. You minus this one, right? You, you minus x over two. So what do you get over here? Remember, you can you can look this number as one half times x, right? Right? No, I have x over there. Those are the same thing, right? This two. Yeah. They're the same, right? And you also know this one. This is also, this is one x, right? One times x is so it's still x, right? So what do you do? So one half, one, one minus one half, what do you get? Another one half, right? Yeah. So, so we know here is x over two, right? Now you solve for x, right? What do you do here? You times q on both sides, right? So you get rid of the bottom part, right? You times q. So here, so x equals one hundred, right? Yep. And now try to plug it back in. Try, try to do that part on your own. Plug it back in. So we now know x equals 100. And now you have to put the value back in. What's that? 133. 133. 134. Yep, it is 134. Remember. So you get 67 on both sides, right? Oh, oh yeah. 67 plus 67 is 134. Right. Remember. Be careful with your calculation. You have to be careful with that. Okay, what else? What else? What else are you like? Page 39, um, 31 to 33. Page 39. And um, what question? Uh, 31 to 33. 31 to 33. Okay, here. Find the x, y value, right? So, okay. So they have two variables in it, which is like one, they have y and x in it in the first place in, in all of them so what do you know first sides like what do you know like what's the relationship between these two 9x plus 20 and 7x what's their relationship like, is there they any both yeah they both, they both x yeah also but also remember are they on the straight line right they're on the straight line right they're they're on the same straight line right yeah. And what did that what does that mean? 180 degrees on that straight this straight. Yep, 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 yep. You're right, you're right. So remember if two angles are on one straight line, they're on the same straight line, they they will always add up to 180. 
Got it? Yeah. Like even with this here, like AX plus 26 plus 3X, they will always add up to 180. Also, if you you want to do here like QY plus 9X plus 20, they will also add up to 180. But you just can't stop for that because you have two variables in it, right? So it will be better for you to stop for experts, right? You know, on this side, you, they have two X on the straight line. So you can set up into an equation, right? So here. So 9X plus 20, right? That's the first angle. Remember, also plus 7X, which gives you 180, right, degrees. And now what do you do? You just solve for X, right? Mm -hmm. So try to solve that. What's the X value? Ten. Ten? Did you say ten? Yeah. Yep, it is ten. So you know by here, nine x plus seven x it gives you sixteen x, right? And if you minus twenty on both sides, you get one hundred sixty over here. Then you just divide sixteen on both sides, you get ten, right? So here, remember, you have to. Check, check, double check the question that they're asking. Uh, he, over here, they are asking for you, they're asking you the value of X and Y. They're not asking you to find the angle measurement of the end of each angle. They are only asking you to find X and Y, right? So now, because we know the value of X, we know the measurement of this angle, right? 9X plus 20, right? because we know the measurement over here. Can we solve for Y now? Can we? Yeah. yeah. How do you do that? Look at the graph. Like, what's their connection between these two angles? They're all equal. Um, no, 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 they are not equal. What's their relationship? Look at the entire graph. What's their common part? What, how, like, what do they share? They're both about 180 degrees. Like the straight line is 180 degrees for both. Yep, yep, yep. The straight line is 180 degrees, right? Look here. The angle from here. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw you straight down so we can. So this is about the angle, about like the, that's how like the angles, the two, they, the two lines intersect each other, right? They have like a common part. They are, they meet they, they meet over here, right? So. Because we know this is the x x angle, right? This is one the first angle, and this is the second angle, right? They share the the common base, right? Over here, right? This is the common base, right? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? They add up into one one hundred eighty degrees, right? Yeah. So if we know the x x value, so we just plot x value back into the into this angle so we get 108 110 right degrees so 110 degrees plus 2y right yeah. y equals what um 180 yep 180 right so now it's 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 simple now, right? It's only one yeah. variable, variable. You just solve for y. So y equals thirty five, right? Yeah. 
or there's a oh, there's also another way to do that. Look here. If you want, if we because there's also one theorem that I taught you last week that if two lines intersect at one point, right? And they will always they will always create four angles, right? Because two lines, they're like they have infinite length. They go down, like they go wherever. They go on forever, right? So, so now you only see the part of the line, right? So, if two lines meet together, they will always form four angles, right? Okay. Um. Here, I'm just gonna show you better, because they always form four, four angles. You know that there's a theorem. There's a theorem for it. The angle over here and the angle over here, the opposite angles, they are always congruent. And the angle over here on the top and the angle on the, on the bottom, the op also the opposite angles, they are always congruent. Because look, if we know this is, this is the, if, if we set up the, the value into X, right? And this is why, right? And we know they have they shared this they're on the same straight line, right? So they form 180 degrees, right? So so if you know y is a certain value and x is a certain value and they add up to 180 degrees, what do you need over here in order to form another 180 degrees with y? What do you need? Another x and a y. Another x. Remember, another x. It's only another x because you have y already. Right? Mm. Oh. Because here, remember, x plus y, which is like on the right side, x plus y gives mm. you 180, right? 180, a flat angle, right? But also, and if and if there's like a you, there's a value that you don't know and you wanna add, if you if you want y to add something, oh shoot, that's not good. To add something that you don't know into 180 degrees, but what do you what do you what do you, where do you what do you put over here? You put another x, right? Because you see above the equation, they're they're literally the same, right? You can just copy the x down. And you get another equation, right? So by that, you know, remember this this is a really important formula. Like it's a theorem that you have you have to remember for a geometry year. You will always use that, like throughout your whole school year, you have to remember this one. That the opposite angles, they are always congruent. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's there are two ways to solve this problem. You can either put the x value back into this 9x plus 20 and add two y's into 180 and solve for equation for solve for the equation, or you can just put the x value back into 7x and and let it equal to two two y, right? So over here you get 70. 70 equals 2y, so y still equals to 35. They, they will always give you the same answer, right? Okay, now so, try to solve this one. Solve, solve 32 on your own. I know it's, it, it might be a little bit hard to understand, but as you practice more, you, you will get it. Try to solve 32.
Get it? You get the value for x and y. Yeah. What's the answer? Um, x equal to fourteen and y is equal to twenty. Yeah, it is correct. So, okay. So, I'm just gonna leave you. You you have to finish this thirty three on your own later. And what else? Do you have any other questions? No. For the homework that's itself. it. That's it. That's it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna start learning <laughs> new part. So you guys are good with polygons, right? So we're just gonna yeah. solve. We're gonna start perimeter, circumference, and area. We we talked about it last time for a little bit, but just to remember that square and rectangle, they're really they're like really similar. They're they're always remember you just use the base times the height and you get the area for you just get the area and for triangle you you have to use the base times the height and you also have to divide it by two and the circle is pi r squared gives you the area formulas okay mm, try to do this one how do you find the area for this for question one? Like, just the area, area and perimeter. Um. You, yeah. Okay. You can also find the perimeter. Find both. Got it? Yeah. Okay, what's the what's the area? Um seventy point four point one. Yup. And what's the perimeter? Thirty seven point four. What what's that? Seven seven one. Thirty-seven point four, right? It is right. But remember, when you write it, when when you write the answer down, remember the 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 unit behind it, right? For area, you have to put meter squared behind it, and for perimeter, you just put meter back back in the in the back. 
See, they, they, they still use the coordinate plane to solve for X, to solve for the area formula. Mm. You guys should stop. Um, practice. Practice this one, I think. Practice um, the seven. Practice seven. Try to solve seven. Wait, I think we have we had homework for this one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Are you guys good with that? Are you guys like do? You... Yeah. Okay. So we can just skip that part. Um, since you guys are good with those area formulas, we can try to. No, I don't want to. Let's see. That's the entire chapter one. Remember, identifying points, lines, and planes. You have to know, like, what are they? You have to know what is a line, what is a point, what is a plane, right? Also, segments and congruence. Remember, there are segments that they're congruent to each other. You have to, that's like a really key point for you to know. Like in geometry, they, like for most of the time, they, they always ask you to find the relationship between two, like maybe two planes or two points or two segments or lines. And they're mostly they're either like like congruent to each other or they're or they add up to something that that is like a certain amount that you know. So remember, you have to find their relationship. Like there's always connections between each other, and if you find that, the 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 answer will come out like easily. Like you will, you will, you don't even need to think about it. Like you just. It's just too easy if you if you can find the relationship between the, between them. And remember the midpoint and distance formula. The distance formula is see x one x two minus x one squared plus y two minus y one squared, and the whole and then you square root the entire right. And the midpoint formula is x one plus x two divided by two. And y one plus y two divided by two, right? Oh, mm -hmm. mm. and those are quite easy. I think you you guys know those. And remember, complement. What is a complementary angle? Um, they all add up to one eighty. One eighty. Remember, complementary is not supplementary. Is at a, at a, oh, at one eighty. What's complementary? <clears throat> so complementary angles just they, they add up into ninety degrees. Oh. They add up into a into a right angle. So you have to remember that part. Complementary means 90 degrees. Supplementary means 180 degrees. Chapter that is, um, that's fine. Okay. We can, where's the chapter two? Here, okay. Reasoning and proof, see? You, you will, so from here you have to, you will start to proving things. You're not you you're not only gonna solve like the value for a certain thing. You have to prove why it is true, right? That's like the main idea of geometry. You have to prove what is true by using theorems, and like, and it's, it's different from algebra because in algebra you use numbers to solve for things, right? But in geometry you use theorems and axioms, axioms, right? Um, so inductive reasoning, see, over here, geometry, like much of the science and mathematics was developed partly as a result of people recognizing and describing patterns, right? Recognize the pattern. Uh, over here. 
a conjecture is a unproven statement that is based on observations. You use inductive reasoning when you find the pattern in specific cases and then write a conjecture for the general case, right? You have to remember that part because a conjecture is something that you observe, but it is unproven yet. And but you use inductive reasoning to find patterns in a certain cases, and then you can write down the conjecture, right? Mm. Let's see what else we can do. Oh, let's see the example over here. Make and test a conjecture, right? Numbers, numbers such as three and four and five are called consecutive numbers. Make a test, a conjecture about the sum of any three, three consecutive numbers, right? So here you just find pattern using a few groups of small numbers like th plus three plus four plus five you get you get 12 right so you know and you, and you know that three times four equals 12 right so it's honestly those are quite easy like i'm, I'm pretty sure you guys know those like like you, you like over here you find a pattern because you know you see that like the if three consecutive numbers add up each other they, they will always equal to the middle number times three right look three plus four plus five equals four times three right the middle number times three over here seven plus nine seven plus eight plus nine equals the middle number eight times three right and over here eleven times three 17th time three, right? So you have to recognize the pattern. It's also pretty important for you to know that. See, it's consecutive numbers, right? And over here, see, they're always the same. See, because, but, but this is unproven though. Like there's no such like uh, theorem or axiom for that. It's just a conjecture you, because Based on the observation, you can you know that like this is true, right? But also remember, you have to like a student makes the following conjecture about some of two numbers. Find a counterexample. Counterexample is also really important in geometry. Like when you trying to prove something, uh, and we and when you get the answer, you cannot you the, like you just can't. You have to find, try to think for like a counterexample that can, that can, that is like, that does not agree with your, that does not agree with your answer, right? And in that way, you know your answer might not be true, right? So see, the conjecture over here is the sum of two numbers is always greater than the larger number. But now we have to find the counterexample for that answer. So we, you need to find a sum of number that is less than the larger number. So here, see? So if we, if the, because the concrete example exists, the conjecture is false, see? Um, I mean, those are quite easy. Describe the pattern. Uh, can you find a pattern over here? and write the next number in the pattern, number six. Can we describe the pattern, pattern you said? Yeah, 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 you have to describe the pattern and also write down, you have to find the next number in the pattern. Uh, they're all adding four. Uh-huh, so what's the <clears throat> fifth number? What's 17. 17, yeah, exactly. So, how about over here? Uh, they're all multiplying by four. Yeah. And you just, but I, I'm not asking you to, to calculate right now, but, but remember, if you know the pattern yet, but in the, in the test, you have to 
multiply it by four and you get the answer and then that's the, that will always be the correct answer. Right. Well, how about here? Eight. Um, it's dividing by two. Yep, it is divided by two. So, okay. Seems like I think you guys you guys get the 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 part this part. So let's see. Challenge. Um, next review. Those are quite easy. No, I don't want to. Okay, conditional statements. What is a conditional statement? Because it is a logical statement that has two parts, which is a hypothesis and a conclusion. When a con conditional statement is written in if-then form, the if part contains the hypothesis and then part contains the conclusion. You get that? So, so if it is raining, then there are clouds in the sky, right? So you set up the hypothesis. So, and we always do that in real life, right? You say if then like statements like, all the time, right? So like if I, if the rain is, if if it is raining right now, then I then then I know that there are clouds in the sky, right? Otherwise, it wouldn't rain, right? So here. Okay, here. Rewrite this one. Try to put this statement into a if then if then form. It's like testing your English skill. It's nothing related to that at all. What do you do here? How do you transfer it into a conditional statement? Any idea? You just have to put, because we know, like you guys all know that all birds have feathers, right? So how do you put it into the, into a if then form. Like over here, we know like rainy days have clouds in the sky, right? That's like a statement. It's just true, right? You just know it, right? It is true. Rainy days have clouds in the sky, right? And now you just put it back into a if then form. If it is raining, then there are clouds in the sky, right? So what do you do over here? Do you do the same thing, right? There is a bird that has feathers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like this, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're right. Yeah, it is right. If there is a bird, then then it must have feathers, right? So it is, yep, yeah, that's the conditional statements. And how about this one? If the angles are supplementary, then they are in linear pair. Uh, uh, um, be careful with that. Be careful. Be careful. Look, and and we can also talk about that, right? So over here, you talk about you you give you, you give us like a conditional statements, right? But now I can give you a counterpart, counterexample for that. You say that if two angles are supplementary, then they're linear pair, right? But remember, supplementary angles don't always have to be linear pair. What the, what is a linear pair? Do you know what is? Do you still remember what is a linear pair? No. Linear pair is pair. Look, if two angles share a common common side on a straight line, that's a linear pair, right? So here's a straight line. And you form two angles over here, right? And they share a, the same side. Then you know it is a linear pair, right? So here you have to say that 
if two angles are linear pair, then they are supplementary. You have to say it in the opposite ways. Because you have to think before you say it, right? Because you because if you say two angles, if two angles are supplementary, then they're linear pair. I can I can I, I just find I just found you a counter example for that. So which means that your statement is not always true, right? So you have to double check your own statement before you say it, right? That's also true in the test or like in quizzes. You have to always have to double check, right? They sometimes they might trick you. So you have to use all of your geometry knowledge and then transfer it and put it back in, right? If you have a they are supplementary. If an animal is a bird, see, okay, that that they say it in a different way, but that's we're we're quite the same, like we're close, but so that's fine. If an angle is a, if an animal is a bird, then it has feathers, right? Um, try to practice number one. So you see the answer right now? Try to, try to practice, try to put number one, try to, try to do number one, put it into a conditional statement. If you see it right, we write, we write a conditional statement into the if then form. So here's the conditional statement. Now you have to put it back in, put it, and you have to put it into an if then form. If they're in the right angle, then it's 90 degrees. What's that? If you see a right angle, then it's 90 degrees. Yup, it is. If, if the angle is a right angle, if uh, it's 90 degrees, then it is the right angle, right? So, yup. And also the negation of a statement is the opposite of the original statement. Notice that to, uh, sec, sec, statement two is already negative, so its negation is positive, right? See, the negation is simply just like the opposite meaning of the original statement. And there's also a converse. To write a converse of a conditional statements, exchange the hypothesis and conclusion. Like those, like, like, when, when, like, throughout the week, you guys have to, like, practice those, like, on your own, like, not only, like, the homework, but you also have to, like, try to memorize, try to read over, like, those statements. Those are really important. Like, like they, they're gonna test you, like, on this, like, on those, like, they got, they're definitely gonna test you on those, because those are, like, the foundation of geometry. That's how I learned geometry, like, two years ago. Like I also like I have to, I have to memorize all of these statements and like and theorems and they're definitely not fun but but remember like if you don't remember those like in the test or at school like you're not gonna do well right because if you don't know what you do like you when you are given when you're given with the question to solve right you have you have to like like because like teachers are not gonna give you like, like an open book text right it's always you, they're, they're like those teachers they're gonna ask they will ask you to write down like and memorize those theorems so it is better for you like to start to memorize now like you can just read over over and over again and you will memorize it you don't have to memorize it like 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 purposely like right you just have to read over and over again and try to do lots of practices like questions right and and you will and you will re remember it like eventually and gradually right it's not gonna be really hard like try to like think math is like a way to like it's like it's more like using like you're thinking like you, you're using your head like to to think like how should i solve this and you, you use all the like like the theorems that you know and also 
like just everything you know and you have to think when you do that you can't just like just do it like, without thinking you know you, you because to because like in that way you can never solve a math question right and you also use a lot of math in in real life like like just just think about it like like in your in like every day in your life you will always use math right there there math everywhere so it's it's really important for you just to 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 like to to like learn it better like right to get her like it's just not it's not only about getting a better grades like i don't really care about getting better grades like like i mean grades are really important and but but also but moreover it's it's, it's about how you like math helps you like they they gives you like a, it develops you like how to think right and how to do things because you have to you cannot do it in a, like a really emotional way right because in like if you do it like if you like don't like it at all like you never like, you will you can never solve the question because you cannot calm down and you cannot safe stay focused right so okay um that's about <clears throat> it's about time um um uh, i can i'm going to leave you some homework so okay um so <clears throat> um here q1 um i'm gonna i'm also gonna write it down so i mean honestly those are pretty easy i'm pretty sure you guys can, can handle those like those are not hard for you guys They don't really have a good question. This one, this one is pretty good. Um, <clears throat> so try to write it down. Um, uh, page, page seventy six. Uh, question twenty two. And also, page seventy six. So, oh yeah, seventy six. My bad. My bad. Seventy six. Yep. And question twenty two. This one, multiple choice. Um, honestly, those are those are not hard. Like I want, I don't know. Like like those part, because for those part you have to write a lot of stuff. It's not only calculation anymore. It's more. It's more about writing things down and like proving things. So standard challenge. You'll find how many pets you have. Find the main, find the medium, find the most. Uh, let's go back to the to the to the chapter review. I think those are not really hard. We can try to do the chapter review, you guys, so you guys can review for the. Oh, try to do chapter ten. This is quite interesting. Um, try to do chapter test, chapter test one, ch chapter one test, sixty four, page sixty four. Just page sixty four. Uh, page 64, page 64, uh, yep, 64, over here, page 64, uh, let's do, I mean, you have the entire week to do it, can you guys do, the, like, just do, just, just complete the entire chapter test, how's that, there's only 22 questions, not a lot, no. okay, just, just complete, so, chapter, one test. This is the entire chapter one test. One to tw one to twenty one to twenty two. Sixty four. Um. And page seventy six, question twenty two. Yup. Okay. Yup. Because I don't think like. Because honestly, we can do those later. Like.
because later like you have like more interesting like more fun like it's like better like like ways for you to prove things like it's like for those i mean honestly those are not those are not really fun like just it's not really hard like so we can do this next week but right now we can you guys can just do um Uh, chapter one test and also the 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 other the 22 the question 22 on page 76 okay how's that how's that is that a lot or no hey what's the questions again so the entire chapter one test mm -hmm. and also chapter, yeah. and also page 76 question 22 i will send you i will i will send you the i will send the homework through email so you guys can so you guys don't forget won't forget it all right